Welcome. Thank you for coming to worship with us. We love having you here. Thank you for joining us online and tuning in or watching later or whenever you pull it up. We just love the ways that we can find the community in our church. All right. We got Zoom. So I read the call to worship today, but if you can stand, we'll get our hearts in a place of worship. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give to you, put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear and this burden is light. Christ calls us to come to worship, to, the rest, to rest from the things that are troubling us, to learn what Christ can teach of life, to realize what we can offer to others and so to return in the world to serve. Let us worship God. can grab a seat all right that clapping and that cheering was good if you if you had you know wanted to see how crazy our world is right now today is August 2nd on August 1st I was watching playoff hockey at my house and to their credit it was playoff hockey those of you who watched it like they were it looked like a real hockey game, except for there were no fans in the seats. However, when you listened, it sounded like there were fans in the seats because they piped in crowd noise. So you guys are in for a treat today because you got the one and only Pastor Phil. He calls himself a minor pastor, which is just a joking way you know, of saying He's one of the associate pastors around here. But, but here's what I want us to do. I, we don't have the clapping soundtrack, but we do have you who are here. So for the people who are home, when Phil comes up, if you could hoop and holler and, and scream and stomp your feet really loud, that would be fantastic, all right? So he's coming up in a few minutes. So let's do some announcements really quickly. Um, the first one is that 20-somethings is going to meet at August 9th. You're going to meet, at, it's actually at Pastor Phil's house, and 
It's August 9th. You meet at 6.30 and things will get underway at 7.30. If you don't know what house church is, basically during this time when we're all spread apart, we have some people who meet at homes and it's basically like a watch party at a home so you get a chance to hang out together um, to be you know to be together with other people and, and do church together so the next house church that's coming online is the 20 somethings that's next sunday seven o'clock we're also going to be bringing back communion and so here's how it's going to work we know that there's some folks whose doctors are telling them you don't go inside a building at this point right and we want to honor those people and so if you're comfortable coming to church and being outside, we're going to do communion twice in August, outside, August 6th and 20th at 7 o'clock. We'll sing some songs. We'll take communion together. And we'll also do that Sunday morning, next Sunday, August 9th, and then again on August the 23rd. So please, um, you know, please join us for those. And from a... You know, where we are in our world right now, we've got, and I know I'm a traditionalist too, right? So I don't, but what we got are these little cups. You, you're going to get a little recyclable plastic cup that's pre-filled with the juice, has the wafer right on top. And so, we'll, you know, you'll take one of those and then we'll all, we'll all take communion together. And then VBS this week, I think we may be, the only church in town that's doing VBS, but we're doing it in such a way that we're following, you know, all the CDC guidelines. It'll be outside in tents. The kids will be coming in just for a little bit for a couple of different things, but for the most side, they're just going to be out. We got a beautiful piece of property, and they're going to be all over it. I say that, and then I look out the window along with you, and we see the rain, you know, coming down. So it's going to be outside. We do have the tents to protect them, but let's pray this week for some good weather and for safety for all the kids because vacation Bible school, when you're like this big, that's the highlight of the year. That's a, you're having fun. You're learning about who Jesus Christ is. You're learning that God loves you and wants, wants you in his family, right? And so it's just a really important week in the lives of these little kids, and we want it to be a successful week. So pray for that. And we're going to take our offering now, and as we do that, we reflect on the words of Scripture. We've been reflecting on this verse the last few weeks because it's from the book that we're studying right now, 2 Corinthians, and it goes like that. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under pressure, for God loves a cheerful giver. We want to give out of a place of thanksgiving, out of just a place of joy in our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our souls for, for what God has done in our lives and how God is working in our lives. And so if you're here, you know, there's the box in the back. If you're online, you can use the app on your phone to give. You can give through the website. And also, um, which one am I? Oh, a lot of people are just, you know, old-fashioned style. You're... You, people are writing out a check and dropping that in the mail. And we, we totally appreciate that. And we appreciate people's faithfulness to the church during this time because you guys have been very faithful and the work of the church has been able to go forward because of your faithfulness. So we thank you for that. If you're watching online and you're visiting, just don't feel any obligation to participate in this part of the service. We are just glad that you're with us. I want to conclude this time with a little pr uh, some prayers. So a couple of weeks ago, I asked you to pray for a couple of different people. Um, Beth, Beth was in and out of the hospital and got home and is doing great. So, and Beth was actually able to be with us at our last service. So that's fantastic. That's a good, uh, she has recovered. And I also asked you to pray for Birdie. And Birdie uh, has gotten out of the hospital. Birdie's a little bit older. And so, you know, sometimes when you come out of the hospital and you're a little bit older, you got to go through rehab. So she is doing that right now. And so if you could keep Birdie in your prayers, but we're hopeful and she's hopeful and it looks like she's going to make a full recovery. So keep her in your prayers. And then I want to add one more. Uh, Steve Good. A lot of you guys know Steve Good and his mom is uh, over at uh, St. Joe's and she just needs some prayer right now. They're going to be doing some tests this week, and she's got a little spot that they're worried about. So just let's just be praying uh, for her complete healing, and let's just pray that 
that that spot is, is nothing, all right? So let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for your presence among us. Just come, Lord Jesus, come. Come and guide us. Come and lead us by your wisdom and way. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. I've got to ask you to rise. Lift your voices. You guys can grab a seat. All right. This is that point where, like I say, in the hockey game yesterday that I was watching, they piped in the crowd noise. But you guys are going to be the crowd noise as I say, ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Phil. 
folks are too nice, too kind. Um, Let us begin with a word of prayer. (sighs) Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this place. Just help us and guide us. May my words not get in the way of you in any way. Um, Just help us and guide us. Forgive us of our sins and our transgressions. We thank you, Lord, for the things that you give us and the things that you take away. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, We're going to start with our scripture reading. Second Corinthians 4, 1 through 15. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the things hidden because of shame not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, and in whose case God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves as your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who is shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. But having the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we also speak knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, so that the grace which is spreading to more and more people may cause the giving of thanks to abound to the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, welcome to Crossroads. My, uh, my name and title is uh, Phil Minor Pastor. Um, I, uh, I wanted to say thank you, and you're in for a treat, um, just because we get to uh, go on a unique um, uh, adventure today. Um, so my primary role being, being the associate or being a minor, um, I do get to, uh, I pretty much, I'm a support pastor. I, I get to support our church, and not just our church, but our church leaders in all sorts of ways. I support Joe. And, um, and doing the college ministry and meeting with college kids. I support Dave with uh, coming up here on Sundays and speaking, uh, gives him a Sunday off. Um, I support Ben and helping in youth ministry whenever he needs it. Um, I support Shannon in showing up uh, Sunday mornings sometimes and also doing some VBS stuff. Uh, I support Jen, our worship pastor, and not singing or being involved in it at all. Um, amen. Amen. Uh, Yes, uh, she probably looks at that as a positive. Um, but today, today I support uh, I support you. Um, I just don't support. Okay, do I click down? Nope. Yes, sweet. This good-looking piece of man. Um, we'll get to him in a minute. But I support uh, you today. And I don't know who you are. Only you know who you are. And you are the you that has decided or has pretty much sat in the seat of making a clear statement that when member preach comes, you are not going to participate. Um, now, we don't know who you are. Only you know who you are. And, and that is firm in your mind. Uh, but today, uh, me coming up here and speaking is, is going to uh, hopefully spur you out of that stage of not and doing, okay? Joe's asked uh, uh, for Sunday of the series, he's like, hey, we're going to do member preach, 
and uh, he quoted off a couple of members, and he offered it up to everybody. So what I'm doing is supporting you, and, and you can say to yourself that, hey, you know, like, Phil did a bad job. I can't do any worse than Phil, okay? And you can feel encouraged, and yes, the favor phrase, you can feel supported. Um, and, and that's why we have this, um, this really attractive man up here today. Um, this, this man is Mike uh, Peavy House. He is, he's an awesome guy. Uh, and, and, and I've taught men's group. And the one thing I love about Mike is Mike is always asking me, he's like, Phil, how do we make this more practical? I need this to be more practical. How do we take this verse and apply it to today? So this is me throwing Mike under the bus <laughs> in, a very, in a very happy and, and jovial way. Um, so not just you can think about me supporting you by you doing a better job. Think about even you have Mike's encouragement, too, um, that you will, you know, support that way. Um, oh, thank you. Oh, it's like, <laughs> isn't it magical? Just the love. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's just the best prompt. Um, if you can get Joe. Uh, so, so when we look at this, um, we started. We Dave on the second week started talking about the um, uh, the idea of the, the the early church. He started talking about Corinth, and he started talking about where it was and and everything about bungee jumping. It was amazing. Um, but what I want to start out with is that is that there's a little bit of a backdrop here. Paul's writing to this church, and how he's writing to this church is in such the way that they had a response to the way uh, Paul preached. He wasn't a great preacher. They weren't too happy with him. So they wrote back to him, and we don't have that letter, but we get Paul's response. And Paul's response is unique in 2 Corinthians because they didn't like how he spoke. Um, and, and Paul, as, as Dave brought up, he's defending himself. He's in defense of what he had to say. He's not just in defense of what he had to say, but he's in defense of his own personhood, of who he is. Um, and he's writing back to this church, and he's, he's, he's talking to them about it. And what I find interesting about this is that whenever we have, uh, whenever we're in the defense of something, right, something becomes us and them, correct? We don't use the we. There's no mouse in my pocket. There is nothing that, that derives from that. If I disagree with you, I now sit in this camp, and you sit over there in your camp, and we have a division. Paul doesn't have a tendency to do that, right? This morning I was figuring out our, Republic, our, 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 our Michigan ballot to send in, and my wife had to ask me, what, what are we, Republican or Democrat? And I was like, I don't know. But it, Michigan law says, you know, I'm going to have to do that. So <laughs> that's a struggle when I get home. Um, but we do that. We have to sit in a camp, and there has to be an us, and there has to be a them. There can't be, there, there, there's, there's too much struggle there. But Paul doesn't do that. We're going to play a fun game, um, and we're going to count. You can count out loud. You can count. Um, and I realized when, when this was being read, they, or what is it, them? I can't read. What is, is the first word? Therefore. Therefore. That, therefore, is a we term. Okay? So, so when, when we read this, I want to, if you can count, how many times the plural is used in such the way of we or therefore. Because what Paul is trying to do and what Paul sets up, Paul sets up that, they're, that in his response to his defense, he's including them. So, um, Joe, would you mind playing... Uh, red light, green light with me? Sure. Uh, green light. Therefore. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that they may not lose the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. All right, red light. How many, 
Did we notice that there was a lot of we's in there? That's counterintuitive to our nature, right? That, that does not speak to how we act. As George R. R. Martin, he always states that there is the great other that we villainize. But Paul doesn't do that. Paul does not do that to this church. Paul incorporates them. And, and in that, there's something to be said about that. About when we look at the diversity in which Paul wants to encourage. Because Paul could have used the you, but he doesn't. He uses the we. He, he connects us to it. Uh, and, and we have examples here. When we look at our examples, um, even in our own body, right? Um, because what's going to happen is, is there's a lot of times, whoever you are, that isn't sure about speaking now, because you're on the fence, right? You will do your own comparisons. And, and you'll do exactly like what I did. And, and what I did is to prepare for this lesson, I had to, there's a heading verse, and then there's, there's a, you know, Joe has a plan, and the problem is, is I don't speak Joe well. Uh, Dave speaks Joe really good. Um, they've been in this marriage, I mean this relationship, to where he speaks Joe and he's very well. It's awesome. So I go to David. Dave tells me, and then, you know, I can, I can now understand Joe and Ease. And now Joe, when we look at him as a head pastor, and, and you can even put him in that regard, uh, you know, as St. Joe of the Golden Mile, you know, like the man, the man, like, he enjoys running, okay? Yeah. He has shirts that are oxymoronic, and the fact that it says fun run, what is exactly is that? <laughs> Fun run. Those don't exist together, right? Like, I only did three sports in, in college and high school, and one of them was lacrosse, the other one was shooting craps, and the other one was fighting. And I'll tell you, the only time I did any running was when I was being chased, okay? So, like, that is running to me. But Joe does this for fun. I'll let you pickle that one out. Okay, so then like, so then you're going to set yourself up with Joe. You're going to think to yourself, I have to be like Joe. So you're going to do what I did. You're going to watch the sermons four times. You're going to furiously write notes. You're going to try and figure this out. And then you're going to realize that you're not going to measure up to Joe because the man <laughs> used, you know, when you listen to it, Joe does it so great. He just, he spits out Bible verses left and right. By the, by, in 20 minutes, he gets half of the Old Testament down and a quarter of the New Testament just in a 20 minutes span. I, how do you do that? Just, and it just flies. You know, you're just like, wow. I can't do that. I can't even read. I gotta have Joe spit half of these out. Right? But I don't need to compare myself to Joe. And neither do you. Because if it wasn't for Joe, people wouldn't like running. I don't know if that's true, but still. And then, like, and then you're going to do what I did. You're going to go and you're going to compare yourself to St. Dave of the <laughs> transmission shop, of the holy monkey wrench, of the grand day. You're going you're gonna to sit down, you're going to listen to Dave four times, and you're going to think to yourself, well, okay, I can't do the Joe thing. I'm going to definitely do the Dave thing. And you're going to listen to Dave, and then you're going to get into it, and you're going to realize that he's read more books than the Pope, okay? <laughs> you know, I bet he even probably knows a few more languages, you know? Like, if you ever look at it, and it's so true, because when, when we were doing, like, the virtual things, like, everybody else's background, there's some posters, you know, Joe's got some pictures, and then Dave just has, like, a wall of books. <laughs> he asked Dave, like, how many of those have you actually read? And he's like, well, I'm working on these four <laughs> just today, and I've read all of them five times through. And actually, he's going to tell you a funny story about how there are Ikea shelves, and there's books behind books. <laughs> it's like Dave's brain is behind his brain. It just keeps on getting bigger. And then you're 
gonna be like, and you're gonna listen to him, and he, he's quoting psychologists. Like he's got Brene Brown he's throwing out there, and then he's got this guy, and he's got this guy, and he's just like, he's flipping through it. Just like it's second hand. It's like, yeah. Oh my God. Mary, mother. And you can't, and, and, and you can't compare yourself to that. Okay? I can't do that. So you're going to think to yourself, you're like, at least I can do a better job than Phil, right? <laughs> this again is encouragement. You should feel encouraged. Send Joe an email. Now, the thing is, is, is that this is what makes the body, does it not? Like, that Joe can do that job, but Joe can't do everything. Just ask his wife. Okay? <laughs> Okay. Show them another thing I can't do, yes. Phil. Exactly. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Show them your man bun. Yes. Yeah. That, I cannot do that. <laughs> but, but there's a question in which we have to answer why. Why do we have to do it all? When, when, we, when we look at our creator, we, are came, we come to grips with seeing a portion of him that he doesn't even act on his own. He does not act by himself, but he acts in concert with himself. He acts within concert of his creation. Now Joe's going to read a verse, which is our theme verse. Go ahead, Joe. He made, he made him who had no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So just in that, we see the workings of our creator. We see the workings and the understanding in such the way that this, this picture has a good way of demonstrating. I sometimes find that art can complete a verse just because of the visualization. When we look at this painting, we see the verse in such the way that we see God and power reaching out to man. He's reaching out to Adam, and Adam yet, right, he is, he's opaque. He's very muddy looking. He's very flaccid in just the way that he's just limp and not, and not really reacting to it, but his hand is, is just so passive. But yet God is not, is he? No, God is outreaching. He is, he is going towards man. And he's not doing it alone. But if you look at him, he's got his arm draped with his finger pointed down to the sun. To child. Right? He's doing it with the heavenly hosts around him. With, with even his arm. And he has so much intention in this painting. There's so much power and push in this painting that it really makes this verse come alive and the fact that God is acting. And he's not just acting by himself, but he's acting in a community. He's acting in diversity. He's acting as we. He's not acting alone. So you don't have to. You do not have to act alone. When you come up here on Sunday, Joe, is that the verse, the last verse you read? Yeah, yep. Okay. Um, when you come up here on Sunday and you preach, you're not doing it alone. C coming up with this sermon is a perfect example. I needed Mike to get it going, right? I needed Joe to check on me, right? I needed Ben to make the graphics. Come on, that's a really cool one of Mike getting thrown under the bus, <laughs> right? That was impressed. It was. <laughs> Boy's got talent, right? I needed Dave to help me get all this together. Dave, Dave helped me understand Joe and knees, man. <laughs> Roger Farmer got to witness it. <laughs> I needed to have these conversations. We, I'm not doing it alone. You should not have to do it alone. That's what Paul's trying to get us to understand, is that, that even though they disagreed with him, and even though they were different, right? It's not an us and them. It is a we that God rejoices in. It is a we that is necessary. And you do a disservice 
to the body when you do not come here to tell your story. When you don't think that you have something worthwhile to say. Because only you can say it the way you were meant to say it. Just the same way Joe can only be Joe in the fact that he likes running. God only knows why. So Paul's fighting an idea. And the idea that Paul is fighting is this concept of, um, of the empire. And, and this is prevalent in the way that even we view society today. Um, the empire's idea, it's the Roman Empire at the time, and is referred as an empire in such the way that their true motto really is taken from a Greek saying, and it goes, the strong will do what they will, and the weak will do what they must. And that's a very individualized saying. Because there's no we in that, correct? There's only somebody receiving from the strong. And Paul is trying to argue against this. Paul is trying to express to the early church that no, that there's something counterintuitive to this in the gospel, in our creator. Now, I'm going to have Joe, nope. Yep, I'm going to have Joe read this verse. And this verse just accentuates the we portion. So go ahead, Joe. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. So we have this treasure in this earthen vessel. Right? This is unique in the way that Paul doesn't use certain phrases, right? Paul could easily say, instead of, you know, in you, that earthen vessel, you have a soul. But Paul doesn't make that statement, right? Because the reason why that we find it interesting that Paul doesn't make that statement is the idea of a soul is a very, is a Greek thought. It's a Greek concept. Because the soul to this, this man is Socrates. Um, and we got Aristotle. Uh, and they are these fathers of philosophy. We even have Plato. Um, and they have this concept that they, at the time, that they, were, that they were putting together. And it was a very Greek concept that the Romans grabbed onto. And it was just this concept of the soul being yours, and that, that you're always in the stage of becoming. You're not, the fully, you're not the fully you yet. You're not there yet. So you're, you're in this stage of growth. You're in this stage of, of being something better. And the more you do, or the more you deny, you, you ascend. And then in death, you get to go to the realm of forms and all that. But Paul's arguing against that because Paul isn't talking about just a, an impenetrable soul that can do whatever it wants. What Paul's trying to get at is Paul's trying to get at this, this, this verbiage because soul doesn't, uh, there's no word that translate in the Hebrewic scripture. There's no word that even goes into Hebrew. Paul being a Hebrew scholar, he wants to use this term um, and it's called ruach. And it's in Genesis. It's when, it's when um, God breathes into Adam. He says he breathes his ruach into Adam. And that's, that's life. That's a life-giving breath. That's air, right? Air sustains you. Air sustains us. Without air, you cease to be. It's a novel concept. If God stops making air, you stop existing. And that's very different than the soul, right? One is dependent on something and one is not. One can be by itself, pull itself up by its bootstraps. But one has a demand in which you have to rely on something else besides you. And that's hard, because we don't like that. Because we want to be individuals about it. We want the Aristotles and the Plato's. You know how hard, like, don't get me wrong, this is not a sap story. I'm not just verbally vomiting this out, because I want you to feel sorry for me. 
but this is hard for me. I cannot do what Joe does, where he just can just read off half the Bible. I can't, I can't read, I can't write, I'm dyslexic, I've got, a, I've got pictures and all sorts of fun things on here. I can't do it by myself. I have to have this body. I have to have Dave. I cannot do it by myself. It's paralyzing sometimes. I can't even drive places. You know, it is honest to God, petrifying even being up here. If my symbols go on the computer, I'm shot, and it is fearful. But yet I cannot have that hold me back. Because I can't be Joe. I can't be Dave. And they can't be Phil. Thank God. <laughs> Don't know if they would look good in this robe. Um, <laughs> and you, we can't be you. Whatever your story is that you come up here, that's in that earthen jar, that you're going to share, only you have it. I don't. And you deny this body when you don't come. I'm going to leave you with these things about the we being good. The we is necessary for life. The we has to exist. It's the church blood. I'm also going to leave you with that you just need to be you. That you need to embrace that and not be afraid of it. Um, our call to, call to faith, uh, I always do bad at this. Joe helps me out. Dave helps me out. Um, but our call to faith is... Can you be comfortable in your own jar? Can you be comfortable in your own skin? I want to encourage um, whoever you are, I want to encourage you to make sure you send Joe the email. Okay? I want to encourage you to send Joe the email and title it, I Can Do It Better Than Phil, right? <laughs> um, and you know what? I made this in the last. Uh, I made this in the last uh, announcement. In the last. If if I get a high school student to come up here and to talk for for member preach or member share, I will give them ten dollars, and Joe and Dave will match my ten dollars. <laughs> and again, you can do it better than Phil. You can have Ben do the graphics. Okay. I always have in our college group. Sometimes we have discussions, and even in individuals that I meet with, there's always this idea of them becoming. And I just want to encourage you guys that are there, no, in the 20-somethings, you're the now. The kids that sit and talk to Ben, you are the now. And there's something that you have in that earthen jar that is worthwhile to hear. And we want to hear it. So please come. If I was to harass anybody, I would harass, I would harass all of the kids, all of the young adults. I would try and nag AJ, Nina, the Schultzes. <laughs> Hi. Don't know where the camera is. Hi. Come on down. Right there. You know, Jordan, Halaby, any of the guys, Steele, anybody. Yes, you too. <laughs> I just want to encourage you. And you don't have to be me. You don't have to be Joe. We just need you to be you and hear your story. We thank you again for this time. I thank you for letting me to share. I'm going to close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this place. I only hope that my words did not get in the way of you. Again, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the things that you give us and the things that you take away. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let's rise, and uh, do, we can do the, the cheer like in the hockey game, but they're really here, Phil. <laughs>
You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in the darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. one thing for people who are watching online you know we will record you if you can't if you're not able to come to church and you want to participate in the member preach stuff we'll record you and then we'll play it for everybody to see so as we go our way may the lord himself bless you and keep you may he be kind and gracious to you may he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace amen god bless you all have a great day